I really would like my old life back where I could walk the streets like a normal person, but got people coming up, asking. We all dream about hitting the jackpot someday. It will make us happy, right? I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich! But you might want to think again after hearing the disastrous stories of some lotto winners. Sadly, many lotto winner stories actually end tragically. From lotto winners who never got paid, to people who didn't know how to manage their wealth, these lotto stories are simply mind-blowing. Rachel Kennedy Take a look at this 19-year-old. She thought she had it all, but it's unbelievable how life can throw you under the bus in a split second. Rachel Kennedy is a university student, and she couldn't believe it when her numbers appeared on a Euro Millions draw for a prize of $182 million. The 19-year-old from Hertfordshire called her mother and boyfriend Liam McCrowan into the room, where the three imagined how the teen's life might change after that. However, a call to lottery boss's Camelot immediately ended the fantasy, leaving business undergraduate Rachel absolutely heartbroken. It was a system bug that played with her dreams. A bug sent her an alert the next day naming her the winner. The ticket was not purchased automatically prior to the draw and unfortunately, it had not been accepted. Camelot gave Rachel the best of luck in future draws after she went public with a heartbreakingly unlucky close call. I called the number thinking I had won 182 million and they said, yeah, you've got the right numbers, but you didn't have the funds in your account for the payment of the ticket, so it didn't actually go through, the teenager explained. I was overjoyed when I believed I had won, but when I found out I hadn't, Liam was even more disappointed than I was. When she checked her account, she was surprised with a notice stating that her numbers were a winning match. Her heart had sunk, she recounted, when she discovered the issue shortly thereafter. Camelot stated in March of last year, we're aware of Rachel's story and hope she gets in early to buy a ticket for the next big draw. That's one way to get heartbroken, but not as broken as the next guy, who lost his house, wife, daughter, and granddaughter after hitting the jackpot. Andrew Jack Whitaker When Virginia native Jack Whitaker won big in 2002, he was already a billionaire. He chose a $113 million lump sum settlement, but ended up overpaying and making numerous disastrous investments. At one point, he was even robbed. After five years, all of the earnings had vanished. You might be wondering how something like this can happen. Andrew Whitaker Jr. won the lottery on Christmas in 2002 and had his 15 minutes of fame, but it rapidly wore off and things went downhill. Whitaker became an overnight sensation after winning the greatest U.S. lottery payout with a single ticket at the time. But it all began to crumble when the businessman and his family took up a private plane to appear on morning news shows to discuss his win and the $113.4 million lump sum award. However, things quickly turned sour. He was charged with DUI twice and sued several times, including once by three female casino employees who accused him of abuse. His family has also suffered a number of unfortunate deaths. Whitaker's drinking and gambling problems worsened, and he and his wife divorced. In 2004, a friend of his substance-abused granddaughter was discovered dead at his home. But the series of misfortunes were not over for Whitaker. His daughter, Ginger Whitaker Bragg, passed away in 2009 at the age of 42 following a long fight with cancer. I wish I'd torn that ticket up, Whitaker remarked shortly after his daughter passed away. Whitaker suffered a home fire in Virginia in 2016. He was also the victim of several burglaries. Thieves stole a total of $100,000 from him at various times. And when the day came for his last breath at the age of 72, Whitaker was broke and miserable. It seems like some people aren't supposed to handle money, just like the next guy, who lost every penny of the $27 million after a major shopping spree and a substance abuse problem. David Lee Edwards David Lee Edwards of Kentucky spent the majority of his $27 million win in less than five years on a home, expensive automobiles, a Learjet, and huge doses of narcotics. He passed away in 2013 at the age of 58, impoverished and alienated from his wife. David Lee Edwards of Ashland, Kentucky was a convicted offender. He initially made the news in 2001 when he won $27 million in the Powerball lottery, which he referred to at the time as a poor man's dream. I've made mistakes in the past, but they were a long time ago. I paid for my mistakes, and I went on with my life, and I straightened out my life, and I've been productive ever since," Edwards said after his 2001 victory. I am who I am today because of God, and I am grateful. 
I can't undo the past, but I can make a difference in the future. But unfortunately, he wasn't true to his words. Edwards eventually spent the money on luxury items such as an enormous automobile collection and a $1.6 million mansion in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And by 2006, he had spent all of his earnings. Edwards spent a third of his life in prison due to armed robbery charges before winning the jackpot. Edwards appeared to have it all after winning the lottery, but after a major shopping spree and a substance addiction battle, he lost everything. If he followed my advice, he'd be pulling in about $85,000 per month for the rest of his life, Edwards financial advisor James Gibbs said. After Edwards' victory, Gibbs had placed Edwards' money in stocks and bonds, but instead of leaving it there, he used it to fund his luxurious lifestyle. Then in December 2013, at the age of 58, he passed away broken and all alone. Unfortunately, that is the sad reality of life. Like they say, always expect the unexpected just like the next story. Coming up is Michael Hill, who went as far as to kill his wife after hitting the jackpot. Michael Todd Hill In 2007, Michael Hill won $10 million in an Ultimate Million scratch-off ticket purchased at a convenience store in North Carolina. Hill was charged with the crime of killing his wife 13 years later in 2020 and told the court he was impoverished and couldn't afford counsel. He was sentenced to life in prison for the demise of 23-year-old Kiana Graham. According to the State Lottery Administrator, Hill played an extreme million scratch-off ticket at a petrol station in North Carolina and came up short in August 2017. That year, he went back to the cashier and opted to play Ultimate Millions instead. I joked with her, how come you didn't sell me a winning ticket, Hill stated. He went back to his car and began scratching in the parking lot. It didn't take long for him to realize he had a winning ticket. When I got to the dollar symbol, I knew I had won something, he explained in 2017. I saw one, then zero, and it still didn't hit me. Hill returned inside and inquired about the ticket. She told me, sir, I think you just won $10 million. He explained to the state lottery. He immediately called his wife to inform her of the life-changing news. I told her to pack her bags because we just won $10 million. According to the lottery, Hill agreed to accept a flat sum of $6 million, which amounted to a little above $4 million after state and federal tax withholdings. He stated that his plan was to pay off debts and invest in his wife's business. Now, it's time to meet his wife, Kiana Graham. Hill was almost three years later in the midst of an 18-month relationship with Graham, but they had a history of domestic issues, a dark red flag. When her daughter failed to show up for work as a prison officer at Pender Correctional Institution, Graham's mother filed a missing persons complaint on July 20, 2020. On the same day the report was submitted, the maids at the Shore Stay Hotel in Charlotte, North Carolina, entered room 310 and discovered Graham on a bed with a single shot wound to the head. Authorities believe Graham was sleeping when she was fatally shot with a 45 caliber handgun. Hill ultimately admitted to police that Graham met her tragic end by him while she was messaging males at the hotel. Isn't it crazy what money can do to a sane man? The same thing happened in the next story, where a man called William Post had to sleep with one eye open, scared for his life after hitting the jackpot. William Bud Post William Post won $16.2 million in 1988, but things swiftly went south. Post won the prize while playing a lottery game in Pennsylvania. He was $1 million in debt just a year after winning the lottery. How can a millionaire be a million in debt, you might ask? When he won $16.2 million in the Pennsylvania lottery in 1988, he went on a buying binge that included residences, boats, and a plane he wasn't certified to fly. Post was not just broke again, but also one horrifying million dollars in debt just a year later. Post's brother was also jailed for hiring a hitman to assassinate him. Post ended up declaring bankruptcy, doing time in jail for pointing a gun at a debt collector, and being duped out of a third of his money by his landlord. Everybody dreams of winning money, but nobody realizes the nightmares that come out of the woodwork or the problems, Post said, and wise words have never been spoken. He passed away in 2006 at the age of 66 while living on disability payments, leaving behind his seventh wife and nine children. Have you ever heard the story of a lottery winner who got shot the next day of issuing the ticket? Don't go anywhere because that is coming up next. Uruj Khan A lottery winner who had a massive $1 million reward met his tragic end just weeks after purchasing a winning scratch-off ticket. His name was Uruj Khan, who immigrated to the United States from India, 
established a dry cleaning business with his wife in Chicago's West Rogers Park area. With a scratch-off lottery ticket, he won $1 million. He chose to receive it in the form of a $600,000 lump sum, which, after taxes, amounted to more than $424,000. But just one day after his lottery check was issued, but before he received it, the 46-year-old was found demised. He passed away from cyanide poisoning. Khan's estate included the lottery check, was divided between his wife and her now estranged stepdaughter after a protracted probate struggle. So did Khan meet his tragic end by the hands of his wife? Was that a ploy to own his assets and wealth? Miraj Khan, his sister, remains certain that her brother's wife and father-in-law were involved in her brother's death calling it an open and shut case. Babana Ansari, the wife, is following her attorney's advice not to talk, but she has previously denied any involvement in the tragedy. Her father has done the same. Unfortunately, the unresolved issue left Miraj Khan's family feeling helpless and anguished. Honestly, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about him, she said of her brother, each and every day. When I look at my niece and remember things we did, I get the impression he's saying to me, how come you're not doing anything about it? That is indeed a sad story. Coming up next is a lovely lady whose life got absolutely thrashed by the insane amounts of money. Mac W. Metcalf A couple who received a multi-million dollar windfall and eventually met their demise a few years later. In 2000, a $34 million lottery prize was won by Mac Metcalf and his divorced wife Virginia G. Merida. They rapidly gathered their money and started splurging on expensive goods. The couple probably felt that anything was within their financial range when they were previously concerned with paying their monthly bills and timely apartment payment. Metcalf found fulfillment in a Southern Kentucky residence designed to resemble George Washington's Mount Vernon home and several classic vehicles. Merida decided to buy a Mercedes-Benz and live with numerous cats in a home close to the Ohio River. The lottery winners, however, soon had problems after a brief time of relaxation brought on by the sudden infusion of money. In 2003, just three years after their victory, Metcalf and Merida both passed very quickly. Merida was found dead in her bed by her son, Metcalf who passed away from complications due to his drinking. Police stated that they did not have any suspicions of wrongdoing at the time Merida passed away, likely from a substance overdose. According to rumors, Metcalf had been into legal issues multiple times before he passed away. The two had purchased a $3 ticket at a truck stop in Florence, Kentucky, and by coincidence won $34.1 million in 2000. The couple's friends and family said that the deaths of the two were caused by significant sums of money being given to individuals who had personal problems and no prior expertise handling such a lot. A lottery lawyer stated, if he hadn't won, he would have worked like regular people and might have had 20 years left. But if you give someone with difficulties that much money, it merely encourages them to kill themselves. Similar sentiments were expressed by David Huff, the buyer who eventually acquired the Mount Vernon-style house from the Metcalf's estate. It was a textbook example of a person who had never had wealth and didn't know how to deal with it, according to Huff. I believe that once he received the money, things only got worse. Well, I can't agree more to that statement. Some say that the best decision after hitting the jackpot is to hire a financial advisor. But in the next story, that advice proved to be terribly false, which caused the life of an innocent man. Florida Man Abraham Shakespeare In the late 2000s, Shakespeare hit the jackpot and won millions of dollars on a lottery ticket. Abraham Shakespeare is a resident of Florida who won the lotto in November 2006. He won the $30 million prize, but chose the $16.9 million settlement to assist his family and friends. He used the money to purchase his dream home as well as homes for his cousins. Shakespeare also assisted a local hairdresser by repaying $87,000 in business debt. While winning the lottery may appear to be a pipe dream, Shakespeare eventually struggled with the enormous sum of money since he wasn't sure how to manage it. It was frightening because he had no idea how to manage his money. He had an entourage around him, but he didn't know half of them, his cousin Tammy Edom said. They were aware that he couldn't read. They were well aware of his inability to write. They were well aware that he could only sign his name. He was their cash cow, Cedric Odom, his other cousin, continued, and they milked him daily. Shakespeare pulled out of the spotlight after getting advice from a friend, owing to the hoopla surrounding his lotto victory. But here is the terrifying part. Shakespeare went missing two years after winning the lotto. He was discovered to have met his demise from a gunshot wound in the backyard of a Florida home after a three-month search. 
it's time I introduced you to Moore. Shakespeare and Moore met in 2008 through a mutual acquaintance. Moore agreed to write a book on him to explain his tale at the time, and she later became his financial counselor. She was arrested in February 2010 by the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and charged with being an accessory after the fact, but the charge was swiftly raised to first-degree murder in association with the demise of Shakespeare. In December 2012, a Florida jury found her guilty and sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Moore has maintained her innocence over the years, but Florida courts upheld her conviction in 2015 and again in 2019. They eventually labeled her ongoing allegations as confusing, conclusory, and ambiguous. If you are interested, Shakespeare's narrative is featured in the Hulu series Web of Death. Have you seen it? Although he had the greatest luck in the lottery, sadly that luck wasn't there when he needed it. In the next case, this $18 million winner got her luck rubbed out in a completely different situation. Janite Lee When a lottery winner in Illinois hit a sizable jackpot in 1993, her wishes came true. The 60-year-old Janite Lee took home a stunning $18 million. She divided the prize money to 20 portions totaling $620,000 per year, which she used for charitable causes. In the late 1970s, Lee relocated from South Korea to the United States with her husband and three stepchildren. She ran a wig shop in Missouri and donated to several charities after winning. Lee lived the high life for the following eight years, dining with leaders like President Bill Clinton. But that didn't last for long. After 10 years of funding and distributing donations, combined with credit card debt and occasional gambling, Lee squandered her riches. She left the University of Washington a large portion of her wealth which was utilized to build a library and a reading room at the law school that bears her name. The amount Lee donated was kept a secret by the university, but a friend of Lee's claimed she gave $1.5 million. When Lee's stepdaughter graduated and she made the parents' honor roll as a Life Elliott benefactor, it was later reported that Lee made a second donation of between $500,000 and $1 million. Unfortunately, Lee's bank account quickly ran dry after she donated large sums of money to educational, political, and social causes. Thus, just eight years later, Lee had filed for bankruptcy and had less than $700 in a bank account while facing $2.5 million in debt. Isn't it so true that money has the ability to turn around one's life? To be better or worse, that's for you to decide. Coming up next is a couple who had a whopping $13 million but ultimately had to file bankruptcy. Alex and Rhoda Toth This couple only had $24 to their name in May 1990 when they cashed in on a $13 million Florida Lotto jackpot. The couple took their money in payments in the ominous amount of $666,666 until 2010. Over the next few years, the Toths went through various family squabbles and were charged with filing fraudulent income tax returns by the IRS, which ultimately led to bankruptcy filings in 2001 and 2002. Rhoda Toth was quoted as saying that the money has torn us apart and caused the loss of friends and family members. Sometimes I wish we could give it back, she said. Alex Toth passed away broke and facing federal charges in 2008 at the age of 60. Do you know, Americans have only a 1 in 3 billion chance of winning the billion dollar Mega Millions jackpot? But be aware that nearly 70% of the lottery jackpot winners spend their winnings within 7 years. These incidents serve as examples of the disasters that might result from unexpected and considerable wealth, right? It's clear that the past lottery jackpot winners have met their tragic end, convicted of the same and gone from this world penniless. Why do you think all the lotto winners end up miserable? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Hey, millionaire. We all imagine winning the lottery is the best thing that can happen to us. Just imagine the things you can do with all the money and zero financial stress. It's got to be pretty amazing, right? For most lottery winners, I'm sure that's exactly how it feels. But if you don't handle your newfound fortune in the right way, your dream life can quickly become a living nightmare. This is the story of how Billy Bob Harold Jr. won the lottery and lost everything. Billy Bob Harold Jr. was a print shop manager from Humble, Texas. The ex-Marine had been running the print shop for an incredible 12 years when out of the blue, he lost his job. It was a huge blow to him. 
Billy was a 47-year-old church-going family man, and he didn't know how to support his wife and kids without his print shop. He started job hunting, but it didn't go well, and he lost several more jobs in the mid-1990s before he finally landed a job as a shelf stacker at the local Home Depot. You can probably guess that this job didn't pay too well, but there wasn't a lot of work available in Billy's small hometown, and he was out of options. He stuck with his shelf stacking job for the next three years. But, like all of us, he dreamed of winning the lottery and quitting his minimum wage job for good. So, he often scraped together a few coins and buy a ticket or two. If he picked his own numbers, he'd always choose his children's birthdays. But, it was a quick pick ticket that came through for him in the end. Billy had stopped by a Texaco Star Mart one Saturday in 1997 and grabbed a few lottery tickets. But he didn't really think he'd win, so he went to work without checking the numbers. It was only when he got home that evening that he checked the numbers in the Sunday newspaper. He couldn't believe what he saw. The numbers matched. He sent his son to the store to double-check the numbers. They still matched, but he had to wait a full day to get confirmation from a lottery official. But when they finally got back to him, he got the best news of his life. He was the only winner of a $31 million lotto Texas jackpot. Billy and his wife made sure they handled their wins the right way. They immediately put the winning ticket in a safety deposit box and found an attorney with a good reputation to help. Finally, they got to collect their first check of 25 annual installments, and they now had a whopping $1.24 million in the bank. The five seconds it took to check those numbers have got to be the most exciting five seconds of Billy's life. Can you make the next five seconds of your life more exciting by hitting subscribe before I count down to one, five, four, three, two, one. Keep watching to find out what happened to Billy and his millions. Billy already knew the first thing he wanted to do with his money, and it wasn't buying a flashy car like you're thinking. He was very religious, and he wanted to donate 10% of his winnings to the church. That's a very big and very generous amount of cash to give away, but he didn't stop there. He soon gave money to another church as well. Then, he started giving money to anyone who needed it, which turned out to be a lot of people. He started with his own family. He bought a ranch and houses for family members. Plus, his wife and each of his kids got a shiny new car. But other people had realized he was giving money away like it grew on trees. Every time someone from his church mentioned that they had financial troubles, he was ready to write them a check. Then, Christmas rolled around. And Billy was there, buying 480 turkey dinners for needy families around town. I guess he realized how good all the attention felt, because it only got worse. He owned six houses now, although some were bought for family or friends. Soon, people were even showing up to his house to ask for money, and he'd give them what they wanted every time. This could have just been a sign that Billy was a naturally generous person but it became obvious that he was just trying to impress people when he got a much younger girlfriend. Obviously, Billy's wife wasn't very happy about this, especially when Billy started buying this young woman expensive cars and jewelry. Just eight months after hitting the jackpot, his wife understandably contacted an attorney to help her divorce Billy. They agreed to split the lottery winnings. An agreement was signed, and Billy's marriage was over. But his wife wasn't the only thing that Billy lost. His spending was getting worse by the day, and he was now already in debt. It was at this time that Billy was contacted by a company called Stone Street Capital. The company told Billy they specialized in helping lottery winners who agreed to receive their winnings in installments to change their minds and get a lump sum instead. They struck up a deal with Billy to do this. The deal was that Billy would receive $2.25 million in one payment right away. In exchange, Stone Street Capital would receive $6 million over the next 10 years which was the remaining half of the winnings that still belonged to Billy. But anyone can see that $2.25 in exchange for $6 million is definitely not a good deal. Well, everyone, except Billy. Remember, Billy was seriously in debt by now, and that offer sounded like a good way to pay off his debt and continue living his lavish lifestyle. To everyone else, this looked like the scam it was and they did everything they could to talk Billy out of it. His lawyer even told Billy that according to the law in Texas, lottery winners can't hand over their installment payments in exchange for a service. Even that wasn't enough to get Billy to listen. Before anyone could stop him, Billy had signed a contract that allowed Trust Corp America Incorporated to collect his half of the lottery winnings for the next 10 years. And only in exchange for a $2.25 million lump sum loan from Stone Street Capital. 
What's the worst way you ever spent your own money? Tell us in the comments and keep watching to find out how Billy's story ends. Billy's financial manager was desperate now. He'd done everything he could to talk Billy out of that scam, but it hadn't worked. He now tried to convince Billy to take out life insurance. He was worried that if Billy suddenly died, his family would never be able to pay all the estate tax he owed. But in the end, it didn't matter. Billy hoped he could have got back together with his ex-wife after signing the contract with Stone Street Capital. But when he asked, she said there was no chance she'd come back to him. That seems fair enough, since he had cheated on her with a younger woman. And he'd even publicly paraded her around town, so everybody knew. You can bet his wife felt pretty humiliated by the way he treated her. But even though she didn't want to get back together with him, she said he should come to her house to have dinner with the family. It was now just five weeks after he signed the deal with Stone Street. He arrived early for dinner that night. His ex-wife greeted him, but his children never got to see him that night. Instead of waiting to have a lovely dinner with his family, like the good old days, Billy had other, much more tragic plans. Before anyone can stop him, he locked himself in his wife's bedroom. Then, he put a shotgun to his chest and pulled the trigger. He was already dead by the time people started arriving for dinner. He'd come prepared with a stack of notes addressed to each of his family members. The note for his ex-wife said, I didn't want this, I just wanted you. His parents never believed he took his own life, but investigators say there was no other way he could have died. His children were mainly concerned about their finances. Billy's financial advisor had been 100% right about what would have happened if Billy suddenly died. Just like he'd said, Billy's kids inherited a shocking estate tax bill. They had no way of paying it off. To make matters worse, the $2.25 million that Billy had apparently received from Stone Street Capital had completely vanished. There's no doubt this is a tragic story, but hopefully you can learn some valuable lessons from it for when you win the lottery one day. Learning one of the suspects is a mom who won a $1 million lottery last year. Everyone dreams of winning the lottery. It's the ultimate financial windfall that promises to change your life forever. But for some lottery winners, the dream quickly turned into a nightmare. No, 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 no! Instead of leading a life of luxury and leisure, they find themselves behind bars, facing criminal charges ranging from fraud to manslaughter. It's a cautionary tale highlighting the dark side of sudden wealth. I want my money! And the dangers of losing sight of what truly matters in life. In today's video, we'll explore the stories of several lottery winners who ended up in jail. These are the 10 lucky lottery winners who got in trouble with the law and eventually got locked away. Number 10. Stephanie Harville and Mitchell Arnswald In a classic rags to riches to rags story, Stephanie Harville and her husband, Mitchell Arnswald, won $500,000 from the Michigan Lottery back in 2016. At the time, they were the talk of the town in Bay City, Michigan, with big plans to turn their lives around with their newly acquired wealth. Fast forward three years, the couple found themselves behind bars, accused of a burglary spree that left authorities scratching their heads. It's a bizarre turn of events that left many wondering how the couple went from lottery winners to alleged criminals. According to reports, police in Michigan linked Harville, 28, and Arnswald, 29, to a string of burglaries targeting houses around the state. The crimes were described as brazen and persistent, with authorities concerned that the couple could be responsible for even more break-ins than they knew of. So how did it all go so wrong? It's unclear what led the couple from a half-million-dollar prize to an alleged crime wave, but the spate of burglaries all share a similar style. The houses were unoccupied during the crimes, all happening in broad daylight. Since early July 2019, at least a dozen burglaries had hit Bay County, with similar cases reported in nearby Saginaw, Midland, Aranek, and Tuscola counties. Investigators finally caught a break in September 2019 after another break-in, this time at a rural residence in Merritt Township, Michigan. Police had already pieced together a description of a Ford SUV linked to some of the other burglaries, and they soon spotted a matching vehicle in a grocery store parking lot. Inside, they found Harville and Arnswald, as well as items stolen from the Merritt Township house. Armed with a warrant, they later searched Harville and Arnswald's house in Bay City and found more evidence tied to other burglaries. Harville and Arnswald faced one count of second-degree home invasion and possession of burglary tools, and the couple was denied bail. 
while they may have won big in the lottery, it seems their luck has run out. Number 9. Amanda Clayton Amanda Clayton, a young Michigan woman who seemed to hit the jackpot by winning a hefty $1 million from a lottery game show, Make Me Rich, in 2011. She made headlines for all the wrong reasons in 2012. She was arrested for allegedly collecting food stamps and public health insurance after her big win, which she failed to declare as income. In March 2012, Detroit station WDIV reported that Amanda, mother of a one-year-old, had received around $5,475 in food stamps and public medical benefits over a period of eight months. Amanda believed she was eligible for food aid since she was not employed at the time. The charges against her sparked a heated debate, with supporters saying that Amanda simply wasn't aware of the rules and detractors calling her actions fraudulent. With maximum penalties, including four years in prison, Amanda's case attracted a lot of attention and promised to be an intriguing legal battle. She pled no contest of fraud in June 2012 and was sentenced to nine months of probation the next month after her attorney, Todd Flood, represented her when the Attorney General's office prosecuted her for not reporting her winnings. Flood said the accused didn't have the maturity to handle the lump sum winnings and that she had some money left but it was a far cry from where she started. She did repay about 5,500 in food aid and medical benefits. In April 2012, Governor Rick Schneider signed a law requiring lottery officials to inform human services about new winners. However, Amanda's story took a bleak turn when she was found dead in October 2012. 25-year-old Amanda died in her home in a course, Michigan, due to a possible drug overdose. Indeed, a tragedy. Some people never unlearn their self-sabotaging behaviors and harmful patterns. Number 8. Ronnie Music Jr. A man from Georgia, Ronnie Music Jr., who won an astonishing $3 million in the lottery, pleaded guilty for using his windfall to fund a sinister drug ring in 2016. The 45-year-old used his 2015 lottery winnings to buy the narcotics and then supply them to others who would resell them at a profit. The U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of Georgia disclosed that Music's co-conspirators attempted to sell about 11 pounds of the narcotics with a street value of more than $500,000. Agents recovered more than 1 million worth of methamphetamine, firearms, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and 600,000 in cash in the case. U.S. Attorney Ed Tarver described Ronnie Music Jr. as someone who decided to test his luck by sinking millions of dollars of lottery winnings into the purchase and sales of narcotics. Tarver added, as a result of his unsound investment strategy, Music now faces decades in a federal prison. Music pleaded guilty to federal drug trafficking and firearm charges related to his operation in his home base of Ware County. He was sentenced after the state's probation office conducted a pre-sentence investigation. In February 2015, Georgia lottery officials announced Ronnie Music Jr.'s good fortune and said the maintenance supervisor and his wife planned to save a portion of the winnings. In a news release, Music said, I buy tickets every once in a while. I couldn't believe it, and I still don't believe it. However, he's now facing the consequences of his actions and paying a hefty price for breaking the law. While some people keep plunging into the bottomless pits of self-destruction and never return, only a few know how to bounce back and make a comeback at life like never before. Like the next winner on our list. Number 7. Callie Rogers Callie Rogers, the UK's youngest lottery winner, who won an unbelievable $2.2 million at 16 in 2003, made headlines again after blowing her winnings on parties, narcotics, and designer clothes for 20 years. The now 34-year-old mom of four from Cumbria has since turned her life around after a turbulent past few years. She even described her winnings as a curse and battled depression during the pressure of winning, which led her to try to take her own life. Her life became a roller coaster ride full of highs and lows after her massive win. Callie even got in trouble with the law. She crashed her car under the influence, was pepper sprayed, and hit with a driving ban. She refused a breathalyzer and appeared at Workington Magistrates Court, where she was banned from getting behind the wheel for 22 months and given an 11-week curfew. 
In 2018, she feared for her life when two women assaulted her after a night out, which resulted in her suffering from broken ribs, smashed teeth, concussion, and permanent damage to her sight. Although she gave away several hundreds of thousands of dollars to friends and family, she soon realized some people were just using her. The former checkout worker splurged thousands of dollars on plastic surgery and hundreds of thousands on narcotics and clothes. But she does not regret the win. Rogers is now studying to become a nurse at the University of Central Lancashire, having previously gone back to school in 2018 to study social care and work as a carer. She called out for lottery bosses to raise the minimum age of playing to 18 and said 16 is too young to handle such winnings responsibly. Callie stated that she had made some mistakes when she was young and naive, but winning the lottery played a significant role in shaping her into the person she is today. Despite the challenges, she's proud of who she has become. She's also mentioned that being given so much responsibility at 16 made it difficult for her to listen to advice, even if it was good. She added that she was too young and that her carefree childhood ended overnight, and she became an adult. In April 2021, lottery bosses implemented the change, raising the minimum age to 18. Although Callie's life is full of mishaps, and sadly she turned into an adult while she was still a naive child, it's wholesome to see her making progress, working hard to become a better person and building a life for herself and her family. Unfortunately, unlike Callie Rogers, many people don't get a chance at redemption, like this couple on our list. Number 6. Alex and Rhoda Toth a couple down to their last $24, won a grand $13 million jackpot, but admitted that the money tore them apart. In 1990, Alex and Rhoda Toth won the Florida Lottery and chose to take their winnings in installments, receiving $666,666 annually until 2010. It is a lot of money, Alex said at the time. It creates a lot of pressure on you. The Toths quickly spent their wealth on gifts, private jets across the world, and meeting celebrities such as Oprah Winfrey and Donald Trump. The couple also spent extravagantly on a three-month trip to Las Vegas in a $1,000 a night penthouse suite at the Mirage. They then purchased 10 acres of land back in Florida. However, Alex lost large sums of his winnings gambling and never hired an accountant to deal with his taxes. When payments were made, their taxes were withheld. According to court documents, a decade after turning over their ticket for payment, they filed for bankruptcy in 2001 and 2002. Due to unpaid taxes, Alex and Rhoda were in debt to the IRS for $2.5 million and were later accused of tax fraud in 2006. Individually, Rhoda was responsible for $1.1 million of the owed amount while her spouse, Alex, was accountable for 1.4. Rhoda was quoted as saying that the money has torn us apart, leading to rifts with their friends and families. Rhoda implored a judge in Florida in 1996 to shield her from her son and his then-girlfriend, alleging that they made death threats against her and the family pet and threatened to set her house and the vehicles on fire. Rhoda warned in her appeal to the court that someone was bound to be harmed unless the situation was resolved. By 2006, the former millionaire couple was living in squalid conditions, with their only source of electricity powering their home coming through an extension cord rigged to their car engine. The following year, Alex sought treatment for mental issues at a medical facility, which led to their eventual separation. In 2008, Alex died from a heart attack at the age of 60 broke and living off social security benefits before he could go on trial for tax fraud. Eventually, Rhoda was convicted in 2008 and sentenced to two years in prison for tax fraud. If you think that is crazy, wait until we tell you about the next lottery winner on our list with an unbelievably extensive list of criminal records. Number 5. Gerald Muswagen Gerald Muswagen was a fortunate lottery winner who won an enormous $10 million jackpot sometime in 1990. His victory had been a fairy tale turn in his otherwise troubled life. However, Muswagon did not know how to handle the fame and fortune that came with winning the lottery. 
His spinning habits were widely known throughout Winnipeg, and rumors began to spread shortly after he won. He spent nearly all his winnings on buying new cars for himself and his friends, purchasing a lavish house that became a nightly party pad, and celebrating with narcotics and alcohol. He notoriously purchased eight big screen televisions for friends in one day. Muswagon's attempt at starting his own business, Gerald's Lodging, failed due to low sales and poor decisions. In October 2000, he led police on a high-speed chase in his new Chevy Silverado and was later sentenced to three months in jail for dangerous driving. After blowing all his fortune, Muswagon, who used to live in Norway House in northern Manitoba, resorted to working on his friend's farm doing strenuous labor to make enough money to support his girlfriend and six young kids living in their humble home in Winnipeg. In November 2002, he was charged with repeatedly misbehaving with a 19-year-old woman who was helping him tidy his house after the death of his wife, Virginia. He later pleaded guilty to the assault charges and was allowed to serve his three-month sentence intermittently on weekends so he could continue working during the week. Muswagon's lawyer stated that his client had a troubled past dating back to 1981. He had been convicted of several crimes, including assault causing bodily harm, drunk driving, theft, and breaking and entering. His lawyer claimed Muswagon's problematic behavior was due to difficulties adjusting to life after growing up with minimal education in Norway House. Things took an unexpected turn when he was found dead in 2005. Muswagon hanged himself in his parents' garage at 42 years old. People are very upset, and this is all very surprising, said his cousin, Mike Muswagon. He further revealed that Gerald had been depressed lately, but kept that part of him well hidden from others. His family attributed his death partly to the fact that he did not have anyone around to guide him during this time in his life. While the pros of winning the lottery are endless, the cons are boundless as well. And the next guy bore the brunt of it a little too much. Number 4. Lee Ryan Lee Ryan realized his biggest monetary win was actually a grueling curse in disguise. The British man won an incredible amount, equivalent to $8 million, in the lottery in 1995. However, six months later, he was rotting behind bars branded the Lotto Lag for handling stolen cars. Although he served only nine months of an 18-month sentence, Ryan became the first British lottery millionaire to be jailed. Ryan had prayed to be rich while serving a sentence in 1986 and was miraculously blessed with everything he had ever wanted. But he quickly discovered the downside of having a colossal fortune. He splashed his winnings on a million-dollar country mansion and a fleet of luxury cars, including a Porsche, a Bentley, a Ferrari, and a BMW, each with a personalized license plate. He had everything he could ever want, including a swimming pool, tennis court, sauna, jacuzzi, and game room. But the high life came with its own set of problems and Ryan and his family received death threats, leading him to beef up security and hire a bodyguard. Influential people turned against him because of his attitude, and he took the threats seriously, ensuring that his family was well protected. Things began to fall apart, and he split with his wife in 2003, spending time with his new partner in Kyrgyzstan before returning to the UK in 2010. However, Ryan's life took a dramatic turn when he was forced to sleep on the streets in a sleeping bag just 15 years after his big win. He claimed he was happier than ever before and hosted homeless people as guests in his South London flat. He now works as a cameraman and still lives in the same flat, a far cry from the days of luxury and wealth. Ryan's story is a cruel reminder of how we should be careful with what we wish for. While Lee Ryan was still able to make a life for himself, Despite all the backbreaking events, some just keep spiraling down with no end in sight, like our next lottery winner. Number 3. Freddie Young A heart-shattering incident occurred in Detroit in 2012, when a then 63-year-old lottery winner Freddie Young was sentenced to 25 to 30 years in prison for the shooting death of his daughter's landlord. The victim in question was 45-year-old Greg McNicole a native of Australia outside the Detroit apartment building he owned. 
According to authorities, Mick Nicole was involved in an argument with Young's daughter over two months' worth of unpaid rent. During a recorded interview with the police, Young claimed he didn't realize he was holding the gun until the weapon suddenly went off. Despite his arguments that he acted in self-defense, the jury found him guilty of second-degree manslaughter. However, one of his attorneys, Jeff Edison, stated that his client would appeal the sentence. Following the incident, a judge temporarily froze Young's money after Mick Nichols' widow filed a wrongful death lawsuit. Even so, Young's Lottery Club shared a whopping $46 million jackpot in February 2011. Each club member was initially set to receive around 1.6 through a cash payout. At the court following the verdict, Mick Nichols' widow expressed her sentiments and said she was pleased with the sentence given to Young. I think that's the minimum that the whole family was expecting, she said. Life took an awful turn for Young and his family. And his story goes on to show no amount of money can save you from yourself and the hideous demons you hide within. It's nerve-wracking to know that Freddie Young was not a rare case who won big but ended up getting locked away. Number 2. Willie Hurt In the year 1989, Lady Luck smiled upon Willie Hurt when he hit the jackpot. Can you imagine the rush of excitement coursing through your veins as he realized he had won a mind-boggling $3.1 million in the Michigan Lottery? It was a golden ticket to a world of possibilities, a ticket to transform his existence into something unimaginable. But what seemed like a fairy tale come true quickly transformed into a haunting nightmare. The sudden influx of wealth clouded his judgment, and the grip of addiction trapped Willie. The insidious power of substance abuse shattered Willie's world like fragile glass. The love he once cherished, the bonds he held dear, disintegrated like ashes in the wind. With his novel wealth, he was a happy family man with three children and a wife. But within two years of cashing in his winning ticket, Hurt was penniless, addicted to narcotics, and in the midst of a painful divorce. His life had taken a woeful turn. To make matters worse, Hurt wound up in a legal quagmire when Wendy Elizabeth Kimmy, a 30-year-old woman, was fatally shot in the head at a boarding house where he had been renting a room for the past three weeks. Reports suggested that he and Kimmy had been on a two-day drug and alcohol binge before the incident. Prosecutors alleged that Hurt became enraged when they ran out of narcotics and shot Kimmy. He confessed to the crime and turned himself in. The judge ordered a psychiatric evaluation for Hurt. His jackpot winnings were coming in 20 annual installments of about 156 grand at the time. While a conviction would not have prevented him from receiving the money, much remains unknown about what ultimately happened to Hurt. It's natural to think that things evolve over time, and the odds of history repeating itself are pretty low. But the next person on our list would change your mind whose case is similar to that of Willie Hurt. Number 1. Michael Hill Finally, we have the harrowing case of Michael Hill that would make you lose all your faith in humanity. In 2017, a nuclear power worker from North Carolina, Michael Todd Hill, won a staggering $10 million lottery scratch-off ticket, and his life changed forever. He and his wife were overjoyed at their newfound wealth and made plans to pay off bills and invest in his wife's business. But little did they know that their happiness would be short-lived. Just a few years after his big win, 54-year-old Hill found himself in the middle of a domestic dispute with his 23-year-old girlfriend, Kiona Graham. Their relationship was tumultuous and they had a history of problems. Then, in 2020, Graham was found dead in a hotel room with a gunshot wound to the head. He was the only other person in the room with her, and surveillance footage showed he was the last person to see her alive. He eventually confessed to authorities that he had killed Graham because she was texting other men while they were staying at the hotel. Despite his wealth, he was unable to control his jealousy and anger, and it ultimately led to a tragic ending. In 2022, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole 
after a jury found him guilty of first-degree murder of Kanoa Graham in 2020. Prosecutors stated that Hill was also given a 22 to 36 month sentence for possessing a firearm as a convicted felon. This sentence will be served simultaneously with his life sentence. It's very likely that the deceased family would sue him in civil court and they would be awarded the lottery money. This case is a cutthroat example of how money can't solve your problems and it certainly cannot fix your internal issues. Number 15, Rachel Kennedy and Liam McCrowan. Rachel Kennedy and Liam McCrowan are a young British couple who won a gigantic lottery jackpot in 2021, almost. Every week, Rachel played exactly the same numbers on her Euro Millions lottery tickets. She was so dedicated, she'd set up her online lottery account to automatically buy a ticket with those numbers. Then, one week, Rachel and Liam checked the lottery draw and couldn't believe their eyes. The winning numbers for the 228 million Euro jackpot matched Rachel's numbers. They immediately started planning how they were going to spend such a gigantic amount of cash. The young couple realized their lives had changed forever. But when Rachel checked her online ticket, she spotted something weird. It wasn't there. She contacted the National Lottery website to find out what happened and got the worst possible news. There had been an error when the automatic ticket purchase was taking place and the payment never went through. In other words, she didn't have a ticket. They missed out on that mind-blowing sum of money and there was absolutely nothing they can do about it. It might be the biggest lottery tragedy of all time, but at least their lives didn't change. The next winner lost more than he won. Number 14, Daniel Carley. Canadian Daniel Carley won the Ontario Lottery at the most perfect moment ever. He was just about to marry the woman of his dreams, who also happened to be pregnant with their first child. He had a pretty perfect life already, but when he won an incredible 5 million Canadian dollars, or about 4.4 million US dollars, he was given the kind of financial stability that most new parents can only dream of. And his life would have been perfect if he'd used his money that way. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Instead, he and his friends gathered at his dad's bar for a celebration party. That would have been just fine, but when the party ended, Daniel didn't want to stop, so he didn't. Over the next 10 years, he partied all his money away. It won't surprise you that his young wife left to look after his child in a more stable environment. His friends didn't want to know this out-of-control version of Daniel, so they disappeared from his life too. It wasn't long before he ran out of money, and when that happened, he turned to drugs again. But this time, he was selling them. He was eventually arrested and sent to prison for his crimes. Daniel chose a path that led him to losing his perfect life. But sometimes, lottery winners do everything right, and their story still ends in tragedy. That's what happened to the next winner on our list. Number 13, Francisco Guerrero. Francisco Guerrero had been a hard worker his whole life. He'd worked as a bricklayer in Spain, slowly earning himself enough money to support his family and even buying more than one house. That's pretty impressive. After all that hard work, it almost feel like he'd earned his lottery win. He hit a jackpot worth about $8.6 million, but he wasn't the parting type and he didn't know what to do with all that cash. So, he figured the most responsible thing to do was to take it to the bank. That's the advice lottery winners are always given, so it sounds like a pretty good decision. The experts at the bank told him to invest 40% of his winnings and put the rest into a savings account for his children. That sounded like a good idea to him, and he left his money in their hands. He continued going to work and lived his life the way he did before winning the lottery. After all, he was pretty happy that way. But then something went wrong. He suffered a serious injury to his knee that meant he needed expensive surgery. Luckily, he had millions in that savings account thanks to his lottery winnings. He went down to the bank to withdraw some of his cash, but he was shocked to discover the account was totally empty. What he learned next would horrify anyone. The bank had put 40% of his winnings into a terrible investment. They told him there were no risks, but they were totally wrong. Not only had they lost his investment, but they'd got him into serious debt. To pay it off, they used all the cash in the savings account meant for his kids, and they'd even lost all the properties he'd earned through hard work. That's the perfect example of how many things can go wrong when you hit the lottery. It's pretty sad when someone loses everything because of someone else's mistake, but this next winner definitely caused their own downfall. 
Number 12. Evelyn Basehor You could say Evelyn Basehor was one of the luckiest people who ever lived. That's because she won the lottery not once, but twice. And her two wins happened within just four months of each other. The first win in 1985 was worth a whopping $3.9 million. And the second, the next year, was another $1.4 million. That's a lot of cash now, but it was worth even more then. She could have done nearly anything with it. So what did she choose to do? Well, she took it to the casino. I guess she figured her luck worked for her in the past, and she'd make even more money. But she was wrong. Her winning streak was over, and the last time anyone heard of her, she was living in a trailer park and working two jobs to pay for food. That's a pretty irresponsible way to spend your lottery winnings. But she's not the only winner who blew all her cash. Here's another one. Number 11. Michael Carroll At the tenor age of just 19, British teen Michael Carroll won the lottery. He collected the $14 million with a police ankle bracelet still around his leg. That probably gives you a good idea of what happened next. He spent wildly buying a mansion he didn't like and spending even more on fixing it up. He built a demolition derby racetrack in the back garden where he'd destroy luxury cars. He was starting the day with cocaine and vodka for breakfast, and he spent millions on sex parties in the mansion, even though he had a wife and child. Soon, his family and friends had left him because he was behaving so badly. Lucky for him, when he went broke, his wife decided to take pity on him, and she came back. That's a surprisingly happy ending, considering he said he'd be dead by now if he still had the money. But not everyone gets their life back after. Just ask. Number 10. Andrew Jack Whitaker Andrew Whitaker was living a pretty comfortable life before he won the lottery. He already had $17 million that he'd earned himself. There's no doubt that's impressive. But his fortune skyrocketed when he got lucky and won the lottery too. His win was a gigantic $315 million. You'd think that because he was pretty rich already, he would have known how to keep that money. But fate had other plans. Criminals got the better of him, totally emptying his bank account with several robberies. Within just four years, he was totally broke. He'd even lost the millions of dollars he'd had before winning the lottery. He's not the only winner who was taken advantage of. This next winner was also treated pretty badly. Number 9. Callie Rogers Back in 2003, Callie Rogers was living in foster care and working at a supermarket. Then, she suddenly made headlines when she became the world's youngest ever lottery winner. She was only 16 at the time, but she now had an incredible $2.3 million in the bank. The British teen totally changed her life with that money, but sadly, not in a good way. She started spending it on crazy stuff, with no role models to help her make good decisions. She also developed a drug habit, and her strange lifestyle made her depressed. That led her to spend tons of cash on plastic surgery, hoping to feel a little better about herself. But it didn't help. She said the money made her feel like nobody cared about her because she would buy drinks for people in bars who were only talking to her so they can get a story they could sell to tabloids. She lost every cent she won and now campaigns to try to change the minimum age for lottery players. Luckily, Callie says she's much happier now she doesn't have the money anymore. She's also a proud mom of three. But what about this next teenage lottery winner? Number 8. Jane Park Jane Park was earning just $9 an hour at an office job in 2013. It was her birthday, and she decided to treat herself to her first ever lottery ticket. Incredibly, that ticket hit the jackpot. She won the equivalent of $1.3 million thanks to the Euro Millions lottery, and she was only 17 years old. Unfortunately, instead of using it to start her adult life so she could follow her dreams, she just spent it. Her first purchase was a Louis Vuitton handbag, and that was pretty much how she continued. She bought luxury cars, holidays, and even plastic surgery. It didn't take long before her crazy lifestyle stopped being fun. She said she began to feel depressed and very lonely. Luckily, she could move back in with her mom and try to get her life back on track. Her mom had been pretty clever and had made sure she put some of Jane's winnings into a savings account. So Jane still had some of her millions, and like Callie, she also campaigns to get the minimum legal age for playing the lottery changed. She says she was just too young to handle it. 
Jane and Callie might be right. Maybe teenagers don't have the maturity to manage that much cash. But our next winner proves that adults can be pretty irresponsible too. Number 7. Keith Go. Keith Go was 58 when he won the lottery. He was a happily married baker when he hit the UK National Lottery jackpot. He went home with winnings equal to $12 million. He could have retired with that money, but instead, he decided to spend it. All he wanted to do was drive fast cars, bet tons of cash on horse racing, spend time in his private executive box at Aston Villa Football Club, and drink loads of alcohol. That's when the real problem started. Tragically, his alcohol addiction finally got so bad that his wife was forced to leave him. That wasn't an easy decision. They loved each other, and splitting up really hurt them both. Before Keith won the lottery, they had been looking forward to retiring and living a peaceful life together. Sadly, soon after his wife left, Keith passed away due to a heart attack. Most people are pretty sure he died of a broken heart. Keith isn't the only lottery winner to die as a result of what he chose to do with his money. But this next story is much weirder. Number 6. Justin Ryder Justin Ryder's lottery win wasn't as big as most people on this list. He only got 600000 But he wasn't worried. To him, that was just his chance to afford his ultimate dream. Don't even try to guess what it was. It's too crazy. Justin had watched the classic Austin Powers film Goldmember, and it had given him an idea. He wanted a gold member of his own. So he went out and spent his lottery winnings on some gold paint. And when he got home, he would happily dipped his nether regions into it. Then, he just went on with his life as normal, glad that he achieved his dream. But it wasn't long before he realized something didn't feel right. So, he went back to the store and bought another tin of paint. This time, he chose the more expensive option, which was colored with real gold. But weirdly, he chose not to wash off the first coat before redipping. That was his big mistake. The first pot of paint he'd bought was lead-based paint and the toxic ingredient was slowly absorbing into his bloodstream. Sadly, he was found dead soon after. The cause of death was lead poisoning. He's not the only lottery winner who didn't do enough research before spending his winnings. Here's another one that made a big mistake by not reading the fine print. Number 5. John McGinnis Back in 1997, John McGinnis was working as a hospital porter when he hit the UK National Lottery jackpot. His winnings were equal to about $16.4 million, which was a ton of cash back in the 90s. He was pretty generous with his winnings, but he also used some to buy luxuries for himself. But he wasn't spending too widely, definitely not enough to go broke. He decided to spend some of his fortune on his biggest passion, football. So he bought a whole team. It cost him $4.9 million. That's a lot of cash, but he still had loads left, except for one mistake. He had no idea that by buying the team, he was accepting personal responsibility for their debts. Within 12 years, the team's debts had eaten through every cent John had won, plus his own personal savings he'd earned before winning the lottery. He tried to follow his passion, but ended up broke instead. There's no shortage of lottery winners like John, who accidentally picked up a really bad deal. Here's another British winner who made a bad British choice. Number 4. John Roberts John Roberts was so poor before winning the lottery that he was living in government housing in Scotland because he couldn't afford to pay rent. We can only imagine what it must have felt like to suddenly win over $5 million. Unfortunately, he didn't really know what to do with all that cash, so he started buying any luxury item he could dream of. But that wasn't his biggest mistake. One day, two of his friends came to him with a business deal. They easily convinced him to invest. John loved the idea of going into business with friends, except they weren't really his friends. Sadly, they'd lied about the investment, and they took off with the last of John's money. Just three years after his big win, he was broke and living in a mobile home. It's definitely true, you gotta be careful when choosing your friends. Here's another lottery winner who found that out the hard way. Number 3. Marie Holmes Marie Holmes was a single mom who was working three jobs to put food on the table. Then, in 2015, she got lucky 
when her North Carolina Powerball ticket won her a whopping $188 million. That was her share of a larger $564 million jackpot that was split between three winners. Her problem started straight away when her family accused her of stealing the ticket. They'd said Marie's mom was actually the one who chose the numbers. It turned out they were right. Marie thought it was a quick pick ticket, but her mom had carefully chosen the numbers for her. But luckily for Marie, her mom said she wanted her to have the ticket. After that, Marie's life only got worse. She tried to do something good by giving money to her church, but the priest sued her for not giving them as much as she'd said at the start. Then she started spending way too much cash, and she kept having to bail her heroin trafficker boyfriend out of prison. Brace yourself, the cash she spent on his bail added up to a mind-blowing 21 million. Crazy, right? It didn't work. He still got a prison sentence in the end. You'd think he would at least be grateful, but he later sued her from prison when she sold some of the expensive gifts she bought him. She's basically broke these days. Marie was portrayed by a lot of people. She clearly didn't deserve to be sued for generously giving people money, but this next winner did the opposite and caused her own problems. Number 2. Tanya Lynn Dickerson this story started in Waffle House. The group of waitresses who worked there had become pretty close over the years, and they decided they would buy some lottery tickets together. The idea was that each one would buy a ticket, and if any of the tickets won, they'd split the winnings between them. It was a nice thought, even if none of them expected to win. But they were wrong. One of the waitresses checked her ticket the next day and realized it was worth $10 million. There was just one problem. Tonda was the holder of the winning ticket, and she decided she didn't want to share. Obviously, the other waitresses were pretty unhappy about that. Not only had they lost out on their money, but they had also been betrayed by someone they thought was their friend. So, they got together and sued Tonda. Unfortunately, they lost the case, and Tonda got away with all the cash. By then, the boss from Waffle House had heard what she'd done. He couldn't believe she treated her friends like that and got away with it, so he tried to get some justice for the waitresses. He sued Tonda, saying the waitress had promised to buy him a new truck if they'd won. The case went all the way to Supreme Court, but Tonda eventually won again. She would nearly got away with it, but then she slipped up. Tonda decided to protect her money by opening a corporation. That would have been safe, except that she gifted shares of the corporation to her family. That was a big mistake because she didn't realize those shares qualified for gift tax. The IRS came after her when they realized the tax hadn't been paid, and she was forced to hand over $1 million. So none of her friends got the share of the money, but at least she had to pay something. She's not even the only lottery winner who was meant to share the cash, but tried to take it all for herself. The last winner on her list got what was coming to her, though. Number 1. Denise Rossi Denise Rossi got super lucky one day when she hit the lottery jackpot. She won $1.3 million. That's pretty amazing news. So you'd think the first thing she would have done is tell her husband. After all, they've been married for 25 years. But she had other plans. She kept her win a secret, and instead of celebrating with her husband, Thomas, she asked for a divorce. She said later she didn't want him to get any of the money. She just wanted it all for herself and was happy to break up their marriage to get her way. But it didn't work. During her divorce proceedings, someone found out what she'd done, and that information really counted against her. According to the law, not disclosing the lottery win counted as fraud. In the end, she was ordered to pay all of her winnings to her now ex-husband. All these winners missed out on changing their lives one way or another, but it doesn't have to be that way. Take a look at our list of the smartest lottery winners in the world to see how to handle your lottery winnings the right way.